Welcome to the Mindful Warrior Within podcast, episode 18, titled Unleashing the Warrior Within, A Journey of Service and Greatness. I am your host, Carlos. Today's journey is fueled by the profound words of Erwin Raphael McManus, and the quote goes like this, If you choose the way of the warrior, living a life of service, it will demand of you the best you have. You may not need to be great but the world needs your greatness. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's get right into it and let's get into what McManus is throwing our way. And the quote goes like this, if you choose the way of the warrior living a life of service, it will demand of you the best you have. You may not need to be great, but the world needs your greatness. Now that's a pretty powerful truth bomb right there, right? So we're talking about the way of the warrior and What does that mean for our time? You see, it's like being a warrior in the day-to-day grind, in the choices you make and in how you show up for the world. Now, choosing the way of the warrior in a life of service, it's, it's a vibe. All right, so let me tell you, it's a vibe. It's like committing to something bigger than your Netflix watch list. McManus is basically saying, hey, The world doesn't need you to be a superhero. Just bring in your A-game, your uniqueness, and let's get this party started. That's what he's saying. And by the best you have, we're not talking about being flawless, right? So who's flawless anyway, right? Who's perfect? You see, it's about being real, being you. You don't have to be a big-time Hollywood movie star You just have to bring your authentic self to the table. Plus, the majority, I want to say 99.9% of these Hollywood people are not real, bro. You know, they're, they're just out to get money and fame and they don't care about the little people. And don't get me started with these people, right? And the stuff that they are into. Now, you know what? You know what? I'm actually thinking of down the road doing a conspiracy truths friday or something like that then we can talk about all sorts of crazy weird stuff on here but let's not get a little too distracted here let's get back into it so imagine a warrior on the battlefield not fighting um not fighting for the medal of the greatest warrior ever right so they're fighting for something beyond themselves for their peeps, for justice, and maybe even for a world without anchovy pizza. No, but uh, I mean, I'm on the real, right? It's about something bigger than you. Living a life of service as a warrior, as a warrior is putting, putting your efforts into something beyond your personal goals, right? You see, making a difference isn't about these grand holier than thou worthy acts it, it, it's it's about the little things it's like being a ninja of kindness you see you're silently spreading these these good vibes and each small act of service it's like a pixel in the bigger picture making the world a bit brighter and you see choosing the way of the warrior it's all about your mindset it's a mindset upgrade you see, it's about asking yourself, hey, how can I, how can I drop some positivity bombs in, in my interactions, my community, my world, my family? It's recognizing that your greatness is like a puzzle piece that fits into the world's big old jigsaw puzzle. Right? And now, don't, don't overcomplicate this. See, the world messy and chaotic as it is, needs you to be real. It needs you to be authentic, empowered, and ready to take on the world and stop evil in its tracks. Now think about think about the people, the people who left a mark in your life. Right? Like were they trying to be these Instagram famous with with a gazillion followers, right? Probably not, most likely not. They were just doing their thing. They were giving the best of what they had. You see, it's like the friend who shared their snacks when you were a kid in school or at the park, 
those are the everyday warriors and these people they weren't trying to be the greatest they were just being awesome in their own way and so as we start to unpack McManus's quote here let's not get caught up in the superhero fantasies you see we we need to appreciate the simple awesomeness of service it's about showing up as yourself again bringing your a game and realizing that when you do so you become a warrior in someone else's story you see the world needs your genuine greatness it doesn't need your perfection we just we we see we we must choose the way of the warrior in service and drop our unique brand of greatness and the impact might be like a ninja it sneaks up on you but it packs a punch and the way of a warrior in the life of service you're not out tooting we're not out tooting our own horn right we're not telling the world hey look what i did right wasn't jesus that said don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so we're not out tooting our own horn here we're just helping where we can so that's what we're going to talk about next year how, how do we practically live a life of service you see we're exploring the different dimensions serving others ourselves in a higher purpose McManus he, he challenges us to dedicate ourselves beyond personal ambition. So let's go ahead on and uncover the transformative power of service and understand why our, our unique greatness is essential. You see, how, how, how do we practically live a life of service? Well, it's like constructing a really cool fort, right? And when you're constructing a fort or when you're building anything, there are different levels to it, right? So let's start with the first one here, serving others. So that's the first step. The, this is, and this is the classic one, right? It's like being a ninja of goodness. You just need a heart, a good heart. A good heart that's open to making someone else's day just a tad bit brighter. Now, you need to think about those moments when someone unexpectedly helped you out. And it could be a stranger holding the elevator or a friend surprising you with some coffee. You see, living a life of service is sprinkling these small acts of kindness. It's like confetti, right? You just start spreading confetti everywhere. You see, it's these little things that create a ripple effect of positivity. So imagine this. You decide to make your co-workers Monday maybe a bit more bearable, right? So how do you do so? Well, maybe you can bring everyone some coffee on Monday, right? So now they're all ready to tackle their day. You know, they're all happy. And that positivity might just flow into the next person that they interact with. And boom, right? You create a ripple effect. That's the, that's the, that ninja ripple effect of service. That's that warrior-like service, right? And you're not out tooting your own horn. You're just trying to make someone stay a little bit brighter. Now, let's flip the script a bit and let's talk about serving ourselves. You see, and, and, it's, and it's not selfish. I'm not talking about serving ourselves in some selfish manner. It's essential. You see, it's like fueling up your car so it can take you places. Because if you're running on empty, bro, how can you serve others effectively? You can. It, it's like when we talked about love a uh, couple, couple of episodes ago. If you do not love yourself, you cannot be there for others. You cannot love others if you don't love yourself. So living a life of service involves self-care, right? It, it, it involves self-care in a mindful way. Like, I'm making sure my tank isn't on empty it, it, it's about knowing your limits taking breaks when needed and ensuring that you're in this mental and emotional space to be there for others when they need you right so picture this right you've been grinding at work your brain feels like mush and instead of pushing through you decide to take a break 
How do you do so? Well, maybe you decide to go for a walk. You see, you're serving yourself by recharging. And when you come back, you're in a better headspace. You're in a better headspace to contribute positively. You see, it's like putting on your oxygen mask before helping others on the flight for li on the flight of life, right? Um, it's helping yourself first, and helping yourself first is not being selfish. You want to be prepared so that you can help others. Because if you're running on empty, you're not going to you're not going to do anyone any good, right? So let's add another layer to to our four here. You see, serving a higher purpose, it's like recognizing that life isn't just about acing it. You see, it's about contributing to a bigger picture. And McManus calls us to dedicate ourselves beyond personal ambition. And you see, this is where the magic starts to happen. And you got to ask yourself, what, what's my higher purpose? What's, what's your higher purpose? You see, it could be supporting a cause maybe that you're passionate about. Maybe uh, fostering a sense of community or maybe even just simply spreading joy by walking around with a smile on your face and making people feel better. This is where your unique greatness shines because it aligns with something that's beyond the individual. You see, imagine being, a, being part of a community garden project. You see, and it's not just about growing veggies, growing flowers. It's, it's about contributing to the well-being of the community. And your unique skills, whether it's a green thumb or, hey, you're, you're, you're great with tools, you're great with your hands, you're helping build these, these uh, garden beds, right? Or maybe even just telling dad jokes, right? Become part of something more significant. It's like your greatness becomes a brushstroke and a mural of collective awesomeness. And that's what, that's what we need to strive for. So as we navigate this dimension of living a life of service, let's keep it real, right? Because it's not about grand gestures all the time. Sometimes it's the consistent small efforts that build up. You see, um, living a life of service, it, it isn't a checklist. It's a lifestyle. And the same goes with being a warrior. It is a lifestyle. See, not, it, it's not a one-time thing. It's about weaving service into the fabric of your everyday actions. It's like this superpower that transforms the mundane into the extraordinary. And remember, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be real. Your uniqueness is what makes your service impactful. And again, it's not about fitting into a mold because that's what society wants us to do. Society wants us to fit into a mold, to fit into the box, right? So it's about coloring outside the lines with your unique shade of awesome. It's, it's about thinking outside the box, breaking free from these constraints of society that, you know, they try to fit us into this mold, into this box, and, and it, it restricts us from being unique and being, our, being ourselves. Now, warriors, let's, let's, let's step into this dimension of service with our everyday warrior ninja-like moves, right? And what I mean by ninja-like moves is like you're not out tooting your your horn, right? You, you're stealthy. You, you're bringing you, you're bringing awesome to everyone. You, you know, you, you're you're not out just saying, "Hey, look at me! Look what I what what I'm doing!" Right? Serve others, serve ourselves, and serve a higher purpose. You see, it's not about being the greatest all the time. It's about being authentically, uniquely, and consistently great in your own way. Not in what we are seeing and how those in control wants us want us to be. And uh, let me break that down, right? So weak men, weak women. And you see them adorned with purple or green hair. These are false symbols of empowerment that only strip away our true power. I am speaking of embracing the authenticity that defines you. 
resonating with your very essence, empowering masculinity for men, femininity for women. You see, we are made, we are made in God's image. He's divided his power into two genders. The gender you were born is where your power lays. This world was designed to rob you of that, of that power. So it has power over you. You see, is it not the same? Is, you see, it, it, is it not time? Is it not time to stand up against the powers that be? To recognize and embrace our true power? Because is it not the same to just, you know, go along with what society, the norms of society, uh, what they want us to be, and is it not the same as just going along with it and not doing anything about it, right? And then you're complaining about how things are. So stand up. It is time. It is time to stand up against the powers that be. And we need to start as humanity recognizing our true power as men embracing our masculinity and as women you need to start embracing your femininity your true femininity and for men our true masculinity now let's get back into it i went off on a little bit of a rant there and <laughs> i promise I'm, i won't do it again okay um i'm gonna try you know down the road um you see, this podcast, the Mindful Warrior Within podcast, was designed and is designed to empower you. To empower you to embrace the warrior spirit, a warrior mindset, to embrace that warrior mentality that does not, um, that does not back down cowardly, but, but knows how to choose their battles, knows when to stand up for righteousness and you you become a master of yourself and i'm on this journey myself with you i am with you i am on this road with you i'm on this odyssey with you but i am trying to do my part to help empower everyone you know with with what i can do i'm doing my part now let's get and, and well before we get into it right back into it i'm going off on another rant here i'm sorry <laughs> i I do plan on down the road um, talking about other things, um, perhaps creating or a, a, another podcast or a side, a branch of the Mindful Warrior Within podcast where we talk about other things that um, people don't want to talk about, right? The key to our podcast, this podcast right now, Mindful Warrior Within podcast is to help empower men, help empower women, just help empower humanity and become the best versions of ourselves. That's what this is about, right? And we break down warrior-like quotes and, and figure out how we can apply them in our lives. What does it mean for us? Um, and how can we be better people? Now, let's get back right, let's get right back into it. Sorry, I went off on a little rant again. I promise I won't do it again. That's the last rant. <laughs> now, you see, every warrior Every warrior possesses unique gifts, unique strengths, right? Let's explore how, how you can discover and nurture your greatness. What are your strengths? What are your values, your passions? See, how can you channel them into a life of service? Let's go ahead and unravel this, this idea that our modest greatness plays a crucial role in making a positive impact now mcmenis i i i say that he dropped the mic with the idea that every warrior has unique strengths and we're here to figure out how to channel that uniqueness into a life of service now first off okay let, let's talk about strengths because these are your superpowers right we're not looking for the ability to um fly Right, or shoot lasers out of our eyes. I mean, that would be pretty cool. But we're, we're talking about those, those qualities that make you, you. Qualities that make you. Okay? Now, take, take a moment to reflect here. 
what are you naturally good at? Okay? Because they could be anything from being a great listener, having a killer sense of humor, or even being able to work on a computer, being good at computers. You see, your strengths are like the arrows in your quiver. They're what you bring to the table. Now, imagine this, okay? You're that friend that everyone turns to when they need advice. Your strength lies in your ability to listen without being judgmental. And you provide thoughtful insights. Now, think about how can you channel this strength into a life of service? Well, maybe it's, it's volunteering as a mentor or maybe starting a podcast where you share your wisdom. You see, your greatness in this case is your superpower. Your superpower of empathy and understanding. Now, next up on our treasure hunt, values. These are like your North Star guiding your ship in the vast ocean of life. You see, what, what do you hold dear? Is it honesty? Is it kindness? Identifying your values is like setting the GPS for your journey. Now picture this. If one of your core values is education and learning, ponder on how you can integrate this into a life of service. Perhaps you could volunteer to tutor students in your community or take part in initiatives that promote literacy. You see, your greatness in this scenario emanates from your dedication to a value that extends far beyond your personal pursuits. And then we have, and then we have um, your passions. You see, those things that make your heart do a happy dance. And it could be anything from painting to coding to even perfecting the art of making the fluffiest pancakes. You see, your passions are like the fuel for your warrior soul. Now imagine this, you're passionate about using technology for social good. Your weekends are perhaps spent on coding apps that address community challenges. Channeling this passion into a life of service could mean creating tech solutions for nonprofits or teaching coding to underprivileged kids. Your greatness in this case is your passion for creating positive change through technology. Now, warriors, let's go ahead and connect the dots. Your strengths, values, and passions. These aren't random puzzle pieces, okay? They are the elements that make up the masterpiece of your greatness. And here's the magic. You see, it's not about a copy-paste version of someone else's greatness, right? Everyone wants to copy someone else's greatness, right? Like so many people out there, so many guys out there want to copy uh, Andrew Tate's greatness or someone else's greatness. But you see, they, you're missing the point. They're missing the point here. You see, it's not about copying no one's greatness. Your unique blend of strengths, values, and passions is what makes your contribution to the world uniquely impactful. You see, your greatness might feel modest to you, but in the grand tapestry of life, it plays a crucial role. It's not about being the loudest voice in the room. It's about being the voice that adds a unique melody to the symphony of service. See, warriors, you need to go ahead and shine the spotlight on your greatness. You need to embrace it. You need to nurture it. And you need to let it be the driving force behind your acts of service. You see, in the end, it's the collection of these modest greatnesses that creates a masterpiece of positive impact. Because it's not about how much money you have. It's not about how much you can bench press. It's not about none of those things that perhaps others may think make them great. 
It's about the impact, the positive impact that you have in the community around you, in your, in your surroundings, in your, in your local area, or even even outside your local area, right? But you need to start somewhere. So start by developing this um, the service. Start developing a service to those around you. Random acts of kindness, right? We need that more than ever in the world because we need to start letting our light shine. Now, let's discuss practical ways to apply the wisdom of this quote in your daily life. Now we already discussed a few things, right? But let, let's delve maybe into tangible ways that we can weave the wisdom of McManus's quote into the fabric of our daily lives. Now you need to think of uh, the following as maybe a toolbox, right? Filled with maybe practical instruments that can shape your warrior's path. In the realm of relationships, Adopting the way of the warrior means committing to the art of selfless giving. Because it's not about keeping score, about, but about showing up for others consistently. This could be as simple as actively listening to a friend in need or offering a helping hand without expecting anything in return. And, and we see that, we see so much of, uh, of that today, right? Where people expect something in return. Be the opposite, be the warrior, be the light. You know, don't, don't expect anything in return if you're doing an act of kindness, right? Because you're not letting your light shine then. You see, consider how you can bring your unique greatness into your relationships. And maybe it's your sense of humor that brings joy, your kindness that fosters trust, or maybe your ability to listen, again, like we mentioned earlier, without being judgmental. You see, the warrior's way challenges us to be intentional in our connections, recognizing that our actions, no matter how small, contribute to the well-being of those around us, and in return, it contributes to our well-being because you know we get a sense of being we we start feel, feeling purposeful now can let's transfer this ethos into the workplace right choosing the way of a warrior of the warrior i'm sorry in a professional setting involves not just pursuing personal success but it involves contributing to the collective triumph. You see, your unique greatness might be your problem-solving skills, maybe your leadership, or the ability to foster a positive work environment. Start looking around your workplace. Start identifying areas where your skills and your values can make a difference. And this isn't about overshadowing your colleagues. But it's about recognizing that your unique set of strengths is a valuable addition to the collective efforts. You see, the warrior's mindset here is about dedication to the team's success. Understanding that your greatness is a puzzle piece in the larger picture. Now, if you don't go to work, right, if, if, if you work from home or you're your own boss, then you can apply this in a different way where if you work for yourself you know come up with a, a a service or transfer this ethos where you can contribute in a more positive manner in a more positive way to maybe the con community or maybe those around you in the arena of personal growth See, the warrior's quest is one of continual self-discovery. It involves asking yourself the tough questions and sometimes questions that you don't want to ask yourself. Maybe, you know, questions that you have no answers to, but you have to ask them. What are my core values? What are my, my strengths? What brings me true fulfillment? Many think 
money brings you true fulfillment but but no i mean money money's good as a tool you use it as a tool i'm not saying money is bad shoot if you if you're wealthy congratulations i'll use that tool to help improve the the world to make it a better place uh, i'm not saying don't deny yourself of good things in life i'm saying do yourself a favor and start helping in other areas right that's what's going to make you eat, fit, feel even more fulfilled that's what true fulfillment is living a life of service for others that brings you happiness you see your uniqueness is your power and it could be your resilience in the face of adversity your ability to learn from failures or your unyielding commitment to personal betterment the warrior's way invites you to explore these aspects and channel them into a life of service to yourself now let's take a look at some of these practical steps to embody the warrior spirit okay daily acts of kindness we talked a little bit about that but just as a reminder infuse your daily routine with acts of kindness it could be as small as sending a thoughtful message to a friend or a colleague or as significant as volunteering your time to a cause that you are passionate about what about reflecting and refining well take time each day to reflect on your actions how did you embody the warrior's mindset in what ways did you contribute to the well-being of others or to a collective goal use these reflections to refine your approach and to make intentional choices for the next day and you need to embrace challenges see we always talk about that on this podcast because it's true warriors don't shy away from challenges they confront them head on and instead of viewing challenges as obstacles we see them as opportunities to showcase our unique strengths and overcome these hurdles what about sharing our journey you see the warrior's path is not a solitary one i mean it could be for some but as a collective you have more power right there's power in numbers share your journey with others whether it's through conversations, writing, social media, your experiences, challenges, and triumphs can inspire and encourage others to embark on their warrior's quest. And this has nothing to do with tooting your own horn, right? This, this has to do with sharing your light, to make, helping others. We want as many people as possible to live a life imbued with the warrior spirit warriors as we wrap up this exploration of McManus profound quote remember that choosing the way of the warrior is not a one-time decision but a continuous commitment every day presents a new opportunity to live a life of service to contribute your unique greatness to the world the world now more than ever is in need of individuals who choose the path of the warrior your greatness and all its modesty has the potential to create ripples of positive change in the lives of others. Before we draw the curtains to today's episode, I want to thank you for joining me on this odyssey. If the information shared today resonated with and or helped you in any way, I encourage you to support the Mindful Warrior Within podcast. Your encouragement, your engagement, and your feedback make a significant impact on our mission to empower individuals to lead lives imbued with the warrior spirit. Remember to like this video and subscribe and follow me on Twitter, YouTube and TikTok. Remember to also share this podcast with others who are on their journey of growth and empowerment. Follow us on social media to stay connected with the Mindful Warrior community and receive updates on new episodes and content. And remember, may your battles be fierce, your victory sweet, and your journey one of continuous growth. Until our paths cross again, keep embracing the warrior spirit.